Hi everyone, it's Nurse Kathy and it's time for Five on Fridays. Well, this week we're going to talk about a serious subject, suicide. September 5th through the 11th is Suicide Prevention Week. Suicide is a difficult topic to discuss, it's difficult to understand, and it oftentimes leaves friends and loved ones asking why. Why did this happen? Now, bringing an awareness and recognizing the warning signs may help save someone's life. I was fortunate enough today to sit down with Rashad Davis of Columbus EAP to discuss suicide awareness and prevention. So let's take a look at what he had to say. Well, today we have Rashad Davis from Columbus EAP to share information about this very important important topic on suicide prevention and awareness. Welcome, Rashad. Hey, Kathy. Thank you for joining me today. Absolutely. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Well, Rashad, what should viewers know about suicide awareness and prevention? So, Kathy, I think it's important for people to realize that suicidal ideation can look different for everyone, really, right? So there is no one-size-fits-all approach to prevention. So with that said, awareness is really critical, and it'll increase our understanding around victims of successful suicide and those who may be experiencing suicidal ideation. So when we think about that, really seeking out resources and education will help us to be more proactive in identifying warning signs, any risks and red flags. And, you know, some resources are free and others may, you know, they may all off offer like formal training that may require a fee. So that's just something to kind of think about. So a person may need to assess how important it is for them to have more of that detailed information if they have a family member or a friend that they know is experiencing this right now. I think the biggest misconception is that you can cause someone to have suicidal ideation just by talking openly with them about it. And, you know, the research just does not back this up. Getting someone to open up about it is just one way of supporting someone who may be experiencing suicidal ideation. Well, Rashad, how would a family member or friend initiate a conversation with someone who might ex be experiencing suicidal thoughts, thoughts of harming themselves, or even committing suicide? So the best policy we feel in the field currently is to be very direct when approaching the subject. So it's important to realize that you can't be afraid to actually ask the question. And so what this looks like is, if we're talking about a family member or a friend, really just coming out and asking, are you thinking about killing yourself? Are you thinking about ending your life, right? This is a very important question to ask because a person may be thinking about ending their life and, and maybe right now they're just thoughts. There is no plan in place, but if we can get them really, really early on before they start establishing a plan, a day and time when they want to do it, where they plan to be when they do it, then we can really start to work with them on getting them the support that they need. But when we talk about a plan, it's really important to ask that question as well. So be very direct in asking, do you have a plan and what does that plan include? And a lot of times what we want to look for is, do they have a weapon of choice that they plan on using? Is there a specific location where they think that they may carry out the successful suicide? Do they plan on writing a note? And we can also get into, when we're looking at planning, are they thinking about the future at all? And I know we'll talk some more about that, but that's really, really important. So if we're looking at, do you have plans for next weekend? Do you have plans for next month? Maybe even next year? That's good information to know. And then lastly, when we look at this in terms of direct questions, you know, asking the person, when would they carry out this plan? Why would they choose that particular time and that particular place to carry out that plan? Why is that particularly special for them or important for them? And then also, what do they feel like is going to happen if they're successful? So if they are successful at, at, at suicide, then we want them to think about family and friends and with those family and friends, how, you know, what they may do if that were to be the case, and then how they might process losing them as a family member or a friend. And so a lot of these questions will get someone to start thinking really seriously about whether they're making the right decision or not. And it'll really give someone a really good indication on where someone is on the continuum. If they're just now thinking about it, or if there's something that they've kind of like put on the back burner, but every now and then they have those recurring thoughts. Well, Rashad, how could a family or a friend recognize warning signs? So if you think someone is having thoughts, but you're not certain, it's always appropriate to do regular check-ins, right? So what we want to do is, again, be really direct with our questioning. Asking a person, family member or friend, 
how do you feel about yourself today? And we want to talk about the present, right? Because we don't want them to be fixated on the past. We want to talk about how they're feeling today. And we also, again, want to talk about what they may feel like, you know, tomorrow or the next day. We also want to ask them, are there things that, that are making them feel incomplete that they would like to talk about or open up about? If they're feeling empty inside or something's just missing, right? We want to know about those things if they're willing, willing and able to talk about it. And lastly, you know, asking a person really directly, what can I do? What can you do to let them know that you care about them in the coming days, weeks, and months? And so if we're talking about today, what can I do today to help you? What can I do today to show you that I care? But we do want to talk about, again, that future tense. What can I do next week? Think about some things now that I can do for you next week and next month to let you know that I really care for you and I support you and I'll be here to help. Oh, this has been so informative. Now, Rashad, are there any key takeaways that we should be aware of today? So take any talk and threat of suicide very seriously. This is something that we can't pass over. And I know a lot of times family members and friends will hear someone talk about a suicidal ideation and they'll be really conflicted as to whether or not they're serious about this or they're attention seeking. If someone is talking about it or making innuendo, it's time to really have an open and direct conversation about that. And so again, going back to those direct questions is kind of your, you know, what, what your approach should be in that moment. I think it's important to be aware of and definitely monitor, monitor social media interactions. You know, you make up, you may pick up some calls for help in those social media posts. You may start to see some memes pop up that look like, you know, they're more, they're coming from a more defeatist lens, right? So a person may not feel like they have any more hope and they may feel helpless. You may see that in some of those posts and those comments. So take those very seriously and reach out to them and let them know that you're here to help them. And I think finally, one thing to kind of to remember is that they tell you they are thinking of harming themselves, if they tell you they're thinking of killing themselves or ending their life, please believe them. I, th I can't tell you how important it is for when someone is telling us exactly how they're feeling, for us to validate that and really let them know that we believe what they're saying, we believe what they're feeling about themselves and about the world around them, and know we're really here to help them, and we want to make sure that we support them in getting additional help if they need that. Oh, this has been wonderful, Rashad. I really appreciate you being with us today. Thank you so much. You are very welcome, Kathy. It was my right. pleasure. Oh, Absolutely. thank you. Thank you. Now, that was my chat with Rashad today, and I'm so thankful and grateful that he was able to spend some time with us. Now, if someone's experiencing an emergency, dial 911. Now, if you yourself are in crisis or you're experiencing suicidal thoughts, call the National Suicide Hotline. It's 1-800-273-TALK. That's 1-800-273-8255. Now, if you're a person who doesn't feel comfortable discussing these things on the phone, you can also text the National Alliance on Mental Health Illness, and that is the NAMI, and the text number is 741-741. There'll be a trained counselor available to assist you. Well, that's all for me. Hope you have a great weekend. It's a holiday weekend, so be safe, have fun. Take care. I'll see you next week, and don't forget Ashley on Monday with Beyond the Table, and don't forget my blog, too. Take care.